Hello Legends. In this video, I'm gonna give you access to this prompt creator agent, which you can use to create prompts for your other NAN AI agents. So to use this workflow, it's super easy. Step one, go across to my Gumroad. The link will be in the description of this video. Download the template and then upload it into your own NAN account. Step two, just open up a new chat from within this workflow and then have a conversation with the agent. And then step three, by the end of the conversation, this agent is gonna output in markdown format, a full prompt that you can literally copy and paste and plug it into your other NAN AI agent. So the cool thing is that this meta prompting agent has been instructed to actually take you through a guided prompt creation process where it's gonna ask you questions about, you know, who is the agent that you wanna create? Uh, what do they do? What inputs do they have? What access to tools do they have? What are the specific instructions to follow? And then how does the output need to look? And uh, yeah, it basically does all of this for you and at certain times it can use a web search functionality. So instead of you writing down information to give it context about the business, the product or services, you can just drop the URL and this agent can web search and then get the answers themselves. And actually the agent's also been prompted up to try and uh, make some of the suggestions for you. So sometimes when you're creating new roles, it's a little bit difficult to fully flesh out and understand what the agent that you're creating should do. So this is gonna give you some suggestions on like, all right, if you're creating a sales agent, do you want them to have this tone to follow this specific process? And then you can just kind of say, yes, that sounds good. Or you can make some small adjustments and kind of keep going with the process. So the cool thing we're doing with this agent is we're using this new Think Tool. And we're using the Think Tool to at each stage during the prompt process for the agent to kind of slow down and just look back and reflect and see, all right, cool, have we answered all the questions to, that we needed? Does the current section of this prompt, like is it completely filled? Do we need to ask more questions? Um, and then actually, as you go through the process, sometimes this agent will stop and think and say, okay, we're at step three now, but the information that I just got is actually relevant for step two or for step one. So it will think about it and reflect and possibly, you know, go back to that step and just say, hey, I've got some more questions or I want to make some more changes uh, for this first part. And then we're using GPT 4.1 because it's one of the smartest models from OpenAI right now. And it's not a reasoning model, but since we give it the ability to think and reflect, we kind of give it some more capacity to do some of these more difficult tasks. And then finally, we have this simple memory over here. So you don't need to authenticate anything because this node is already pre-authenticated within NAN. It just uses the, um, the browser memory for you. And since we're using GPT 4.1, we can actually have a massive context window length. So GPT 4.1 actually supports up to 1 million tokens of context, which means that when we send the last 50 interactions into the model, it's absolutely no problem for it at all. It's not gonna to struggle to process the entire history of the conversation. And the reason that it's set at 50 and not something like five is because throughout this process, the agent will ask you a bunch of questions. They might go back and actually re-ask you some questions. Um, but we want the entire interaction given to the GPT 4.1 model. So at the very end, when it creates the prompt for you, it has the entire history of the conversation. So it's super important to set this really, really high. I think 50 is too much personally, but I also want to add 50 because if you have a more complicated agent, we're, we're going to be basically giving the entire context back into the 4.1 model for the very, very end. If you're worried that you're going to have you know, a conversation that's longer than this, cool, set it to 100. There's no problem at all. Okay, so before we open up a chat and actually run you through this process, let's dig into the agent and see how the prompt looks. And then over in system message, we have the prompt for our meta agent. So we're just defining this agent to be a prompt engineering assistant. Um, the main objective of this agent is to actually create a prompt that has these sections. So the prompt that it's gonna create for us for our, like that we're gonna copy and paste into our other NAN AI agents is gonna have these specific sections. So probably stuff that you're already familiar with like role, context, tools, instructions. Um, but I did put some other sections into here just to demo how this would look. And then to show you in a little bit exactly how you would change this to you know possibly fit your use case a little bit better so these specific sections are then broken down in the instructions to say okay for you know for each section make sure that you ask a couple of questions we're explaining what the goal like what information we want to extract per section is and then at the very end of the section uh, we're always saying use the think tool to reflect and just see does everything seem right is there any information that we think is missing um, so you can see here we have the role section the context uh, business, product overview, tools available. And once again, it's literally this stuff here. So this is tied into the actual uh, instructions that are giving to this meta agent. And um, at the very end, final confirmation checklist, use the think process to actually uh, make sure that everything is covered off. Um, and then the final output is just basically saying, cool, in Markdown, um, output the actual prompt, so the user can just copy and paste it and use it for their own NAN AI agent. All right, so let's give this a crack. Hi there. Awesome, hello legend. I'm here to help you build a super clear structured prompt for your NAN AI agent. Uh, let's start with understanding the role, okay? So what do you want this agent to act as and what kind of requests or situations will they typically handle? Okay, so uh, I need a customer support agent who will handle troubleshooting tickets. 
Awesome, thanks for sharing. To clarify a bit further, is a specific area of expertise the agent should focus on? Um, yes, yeah, so technical support and technical troubleshooting. Um, and what kind of tone should it use when applying to customers? Okay, and tone should be professional, but also uh, empathetic, because I think people will be uh, pretty upset if they have a problem with their product. Okay. All right, so it's using the think mode, which I think means that it's finished the first section to get the, um, yeah, to get the role of the agent. So act as a customer support agent, specialized in technical support and troubleshooting, handles incoming support requests, uses a professionally empathetic tone to address frustrated or upset customers. Um, yeah, that's perfect, yeah. Let's keep going. So now we're gonna be going on to section two. And once again, all these sections, you can just edit in the prompt like I mentioned before. So let's understand where this agent fits into your workflow. So yeah, for, like for me, context is a massive thing. And I know everyone speaks about context for the agent, like, oh, it's a, you know, it's a sales agent and it's meant to help convert people that, um, you know, generated a new form or, or submitted a form on our website. I think that's good. And I think that context of the actual agent itself is very important. But I also like to understand the context of the agent within the overall workflow. So the way that I have this structured is, um, what is act like? What is what does the agent uh, do once it's triggered? So what's the actual um, outcome of this agent in the in the entire process itself? But then what happens before this agent runs? Like, is there an agent before this agent that's meant to run through a process, or is there an agent after this agent that receives this output and does something else with it? And I think that context is very important for this specific agent to actually um, well, not for this one. This is the meta agent that we're doing, but like in the actual workflow we're building, like there's probably sometimes there's like three or four agents you might have, or it might be part of an overall workflow that where there's like other tools that are involved. I think that's super important to just make sure that the agent produces the right style of output. So for question one, uh, what does this agent do when it's, when it's triggered? Uh, this agent reviews customer support tickets from Zendesk. Um, then it generates a reply, or if it cannot reply, it uh, escalates the ticket. Now for two, what does it do? What happens before this agent runs? Okay, so uh, before this agent runs, the uh, ticket information is sent in from Zendesk via a webhook. Okay, and then three, what happens uh, afterwards? So what's the next section here? Okay, so after this agent, we then, um, Okay, what's the overall workflow we're building? We then reply to the customer or we escalate to a human if needed. And is there any other background information like company policy or escalation process? Yes, there is an escalation process, but I don't have one defined. Can you help with that? And let's see what we get back. So right now we just gave the context of this agent saying that, all right, this agent gets the ticket information from Zendesk, um, they review it and they try and generate a response. And if they cannot generate a response, we then escalate it to an actual human support agent. Um, before this agent runs, the information comes in from Zendesk via a webhook. And then after this agent, we have a process where we will escalate to a human if we need to. So, okay, here's a summary so far. The uh, agent reviews the incoming customer support query. Yes, the ticket information is sent from Zendesk, uh, yes. Uh, the agent's response is used to reply to the customer or if the issue is escalated the ticket is passed on to a human support agent that's exactly what we want that's perfect um, and then escalation if the ai isn't confident it can help it escalates to a human uh, okay i think that's fine for now yeah let's keep going maybe we can uh, fix the escalation process later um, perfect next let's get a snapshot of your business or product okay so for this i'm just going to give it dualcut.com which is the website so we should be using the web search tool perfect um, and we should be able to answer these questions, yeah, just from that web search tool. And there we go. So a uh, concise product business overview is, uh, all right, so it sells the hot tap. So this is a um, engineering company that does outdoor comfort solutions, sells the hot tap, the ensuite shower, and a couple of accessories, uh, and it helps outdoor enthusiasts seeking outdoor comfort. Um, and the main pain point people come across is, all right, troubleshooting hot water systems, set up instructions, uh, some missing parts, and then to ensure, say, this is perfect, yeah. So this is actually, that's a perfect outline. So that was very easy for me. I don't have to you know, write any of that myself. I just use web search. 
Um, let's define what tools your support agent will have access to. So uh, any other tools or sub workflows? So this is really cool. It's suggesting knowledge base, product manuals, scripts. Okay, I'm just gonna say it has access to a Pinecone agent tool, which it searches uh, for RAG to find um, possible troubleshooting steps. And then it also has access to a Zendesk tool, which it uses to uh, add a response to the ticket. It only adds a response if it has successful RAG. If it doesn't uh, and it cannot help, whoops, it will escalate uh, using the next agent in the flow. All right, awesome. So we have, uh, we're basically saying that uh, the NAA uh, agent that we're creating is gonna have two key tools, a RAG search tool and a Zendesk tool to add responses to tickets. Um, yeah, that looks pretty cool. What input variables? Okay, so for input variables, we will have the Zendesk ticket subject and the first uh, message from the user. Note, we are not replying to existing tickets. So tickets that already have uh, multiple messages from our support staff. We are only working with brand new tickets. So actually when I create customer support agents, in general, I like to only respond to the very first, like be the first response on a ticket from the company. I don't like to just go into a ticket halfway through that has five messages from the user, five from our staff, because at that stage, typically the request needs some other outside action to be completed. Um, like it might need to be escalated to a technical support staff member anyway, or there might need to be some, um, like a, a different tool has to be used to process, I don't know, some certain like specific refund or whatever. So during the ticket, I think that's actually necessary for a human to be there. But the very first response, this is what I, when I'm building support agents, uh, that's where I think the AI can uh, really kill it. So, all right, so we have two input variables, Zendesk ticket subject and a Zendesk ticket message. For clarity, the agent only process new tickets, no reply chains or tickets with previous staff and customer interactions. Um, that's fine. And now what do you want the AI to do once it receives these variables? Yeah, okay, I can suggest a process based on everything so far. Yes, please suggest a process. So this is gonna be the instruction section of like, all right, you know, uh, so far it has the uh, understanding of this is the role, this is the business that it works for, this is the product, uh, this is a specific task. So now it's gonna outline a process or instructions uh, for this technical support agent. So we have review the ticket subject and ticket message. Yes, use the Pinecone rag search tool to try and troubleshoot um, by finding relevant information. Um, if a clear and relevant troubleshooting solution is answered uh, or answer is found, compose the reply and then use a Zendesk tool. To, like this is how easy, like this is perfect, right? Um, and actually throughout this process anyway, it forces you to understand the role and the workflow a little bit better because these are some of the things that you have to think about like, all right, how does this actually get the information? Well, it's gonna have to be a webhook from this external tool. All right, what happens afterwards? Like, so this is in, in essence, a kind of like a bit of a pre-planning as well for your agent. Um, all right, awesome. If there is no relevant answer found or if the issue is unclear or out of scope, do not attempt to guess and escalate the ticket by passing it to the next agent in a workflow, flagging it as new, uh, needs human review. Never attempt to assist if there is any doubt. Always choose escalation over uncertain responses. Um, optional best practices. Always personalize the response with the customer's name. Offer to help further or clarify the suggestion. Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. Let's see what's up next. Okay, cool. So uh, now let's add a typical example to make everything extra clear. Would you want to be, uh, provide a real life example or should I make one up? Yes, please make one up. All right, awesome. So we have a uh, sample input, Zenless ticket subject, hot tap, not heating water. Um, hi, I bought the hot tap and set up at my campsite, but the water comes out cold even when the burner is on. What should I do? That's actually pretty good. That's, uh, that's, yeah, that's very good. Um, hi there, thanks for reaching out. I'm sorry to hear that your hot tub's not working as expected. Here are some steps, step one, step two, step three. This, that's actually freaking very good. Um, now, escalate equals true. So, okay, if the pinecone rag doesn't find any relevant information, this is the escalation output. Um, escalate true, no, unable to find relevant troubleshooting information. Yeah, this is perfect. This is perfect. Okay, so let's see what's next. Uh, next, let's specify the output format. 
Should the agent always respond in structured JSON? So that's what I recommend in this prompt. I always love JSON output. Uh, but let's just clarify. So if the agent has the answer, they use the tool, oh, sorry, the Zendesk tool to um, send the reply. The output should be in JSON and have um, like an escalate key just to show yes or no, depending on if escalation is needed. Okay, so that should clarify that the agent uh, doesn't have to output the response. They should just uh, output that there is an escalation, yes or no. Um, but this is pretty cool. Uh, so, so if the solution is found, it just outputs the response anyway. I actually like that. And then escalate to a human otherwise. Would you like to add or change anything in the output files? Or should we lock this in? Um, actually, I also want to include reasoning alongside the output so we know why the choice was made. And I think this is pretty cool, mainly for these escalate ones, because if we're going to be escalating to a human. Uh, I just want to know why we escalated it. And if we have like logging or reporting via Google Sheet, we can just log that. All right, it was escalated and for this specific reason. So like here, escalate, yes, because no relevant solution was found in a knowledge base. Um, yeah, that's cool, because then I can review that specific interaction and see, OK, we need to update our knowledge base and give it some more information for this specific example. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Now to wrap up, are there any hard rules or boundaries the agent must follow? So never attempt to guess any answers. That's perfect. Never mention internal tools or processes to the customer. Respond only to brand new tickets. Always use a professional, pathetic tone. Never fabricate steps. Only use information provided. Yeah, that's perfect as well. For a starter prompt, now we have our role. So act as a, te a technical customer support agent specializing in troubleshooting tickets for Julka's products. Awesome. Provide a clear, professional, empathetic responses um, that help frustrated customers with their technical issues, such as the hot tap water system. Um, the current agent is meant to, you know, try and respond to troubleshooting tickets. Uh, they get the information from Zendesk, and the very next step is, a, uh, you know, a possible escalation route. So now this agent understands exactly everything. Like I've got to respond to tickets that I'm getting in from Zendesk, and if I can't respond, I'm going to escalate them. So that's a full context. Um, more information about Jolka based on the web search that we had, access to the different tools that we have as well, the input variables that we're going to be sending in, which is you can actually just paste those variables in from your um, webhook workflow if you had it here. And then the instructions to actually answer the ticket, the JSON output that we have, um, and then some examples. And then finally, um, our actual output format and then rules and final instructions. So then you would literally just take this, you would just copy this, literally this entire thing, go into a brand new AI agent. So let's just say we open one up here. Let's go into system message, paste it in. And there we have our actual prompt. So we have, you know, we could probably take this out. We have the role of the agent. We have context, business process overview, tools, input variables, instructions, output format. Uh, and then we have this here. So yeah, maybe here you would have like, you need to change some of these headings just because the output format broke before, but that's everything you have now. And it probably took us like five minutes because we went through slowly, but now we have a great understanding of who this agent is, what it does. And then even for ourselves, probably a bit more of an understanding of how the overall workflow should actually look because of some of the questions we were asked here. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this workflow. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you find this valuable, if you actually think this kind of meta prompting agent is going to help you, or if you're already using this, if it is helping you create prompts for your other NAN AI agents. All right, thank you. See ya.